Okay, as we open up the book of Luke, I want to go back and make a correction where I was wrong. We tried to look up the verse and I had the wrong verse. Luke 1 9, according to the custom of the priest's office, his lot was to burn incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. Let's turn to Exodus 30. This is one of the ones that was wrong. Exodus 30, verses 1 through 8. This is the incense altar. This is the foundation of what we're starting off the Gospel of Luke with Zacharias, John the Baptist's father. He's standing at this incense altar, altar of incense, and thou shalt make an altar to burn incense upon. Only incense was burned upon this. There, there was no animal. There was no corn. There was nothing to be burned on this but incense. If you were to bring some fat upon this thing, you were wrong. An incense of shittim wood, which shall thou make it. A cubic shall be a length thereof, and a cubic the breadth thereof. Four square shall it be, and two cubits shall be the height thereof. The horns thereof shall be of the same. All one building. And thou shalt overlay it with pure gold. The top thereof, and the sides thereof. Of round about the horns thereof, and thou shalt make unto it a crown of gold round about. The table had a crown, the ark had a crown, this has a crown. The two golden rings shalt thou make to it under the crown of it. By the two corners thereof, upon the two sides of it, shalt thou make it. Thou shalt be for places for the staves. To bear it with all. This was something that was carried upon the priest's shoulders. Like the Ark of the Covenant. And the table had staves. And thou shalt make the staves of shittim wood. Overlay them with, with gold. For thou shalt put it before the veil. Okay, put it right before the veil. Remember we did with Hebrews. Hebrews 9, 2. That is by the Ark of the Testimony. That's the veil that is rent. Before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, where I will meet with thee. So you're standing at the veil as a priest. On the other side of that veil is God. I wonder if it was able for any of that smoke of the veil to go over in the most holy place. And Aaron. That's the high priest. Shall burn thereof sweet incense every morning. No, it's like that now. When he dresses the lamps, he shall burn incense upon it. So the high priest would go in there and trim the, the, the wicks on the candle that's right there. Then he would burn the incense while he's doing that. And when Aaron lighteth the lamps at even, he shall burn incense upon it, a per perpetual incense before the Lord throughout your generation. Notice verse 7 says morning, and verse 8 says evening. So that gives us the, the time when we see Luke chapter 1, it's either in the morning or it's at the evening, at the time of incense. Back to Luke. And I apologize for being wrong, but I am I am human and God is God and I'll admit where I am wrong, where I'm wrong. Verse eleven. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled. And fear fell upon him. I don't think we're going to get any more further than that. Now remember the holy place. Remember I kept saying the holy place. And we read through all the stuff. Only the priests were allowed in there. And we're going to come up a little bit later. We're going to talk about somebody who does go in 
where he doesn't belong. So an angel shows up. Not a man. He's not human. He's on the north side of the temple. He went in from east to west. From the entrance to the most holy place is east to west, so he is standing on the north, on the right side of the altar. So if you're looking at the altar, you're looking at the veil, and your right hand is Gabriel, which we find out later is Gabriel. Now, why is he on the north? Why is he on the right side? Because if he's got a message from the, from God, he won't be on the left side, as we talked about in Psalms. But why is he specific in that location? I don't know. But the Holy Spirit wants you to know at the right side of the altar of in incense, which is prayer, which we've already studied and, and read about. And that's quite interesting that the New Testament begins with John the Baptist, his parents, who are blameless when it comes to the law at the time of prayer. And God answers their prayer. The prayer that's being answered here is the forerunner of the Messiah. And John the Baptist is beheaded. And Jesus Christ is crucified. Verse 12. In verse 12 it says, And when Zacharias saw him, it doesn't say her, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. Now there, there's a verse that you read that you don't recognize what it's saying if you grew up as a Roman Catholic. Why does this happen to Zechariah? Why is this verse put in the Bible? You know, if you study the words of the Bible and count the words of the Bible, they are there for a reason. Those, those Listen, the chapter and verse markings are, are not inspired by God, but they are inspired by God. The, the placement of them are remarkable. What I'm trying to say is those chapters and verse markings were not in the original. They came more later on in life. But I'll tell you one thing. When, it comes, if, when you study words in the Bible and you start looking at they start showing at the same chat, at the verse numbers, it, it gets weird. Study the, the, the three sixteens in the Bible. Study the sixteen elevens in the Bible. Chapter sixteen, verse eleven. Study the thirteen thirteens in the Bible. Study the eighteen eighteens. But that's another time. The angel looked like a man. And he had no wings. You're going to see by the response of Zacharias, he didn't have wings. He wasn't to him no holy thing from heaven because it proved fear. And let me say now, before we close this, this session, is if he had saw this thing having wings, he would say, okay, you're of God. I'm safe. The fact that he feared that there's a man standing there, we're going to look in a minute. Shows that this angel was a, it was a man or looked like a man. Now let's go to Genesis 18 2 as we look at angels. We're going to study it all. We got the time. We'll let the Lord Jesus Christ finish his lesson if he comes for us nice and timely, which timely would be for me now. 
In Genesis 18, too. And he lifted up his eyes and looked. And lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And he said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee, from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched and wash your feet, food, water, and rest yourself under the tree. Look at verse 13, same chapter. And the Lord said unto Abraham, The Lord was one of them. Wow. That's interesting. 1816. The men rose up from thence. They looked like men. 1822. And the men turned their faces from thence. Nineteen one, and there came two angels to Sodom. What happened to the other one? The other one that was the Lord is still with Abraham. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them. He bowed himself with his face toward the ground. That's an oriental gesture. And he said, Behold now, my lords. Abraham had a capital L. Lot was just a small L. Turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night. Wash your feet, and you shall rise up early. All right, you, you sleep, you got feet, and you need to be treated as a human. And verse 3, I'll, I'll put food down for you. There's no question that these winged people are coming. Oh, you're winged people. Do you eat? If you eat, I'll give you some food. Oh, you winged people. Do you sleep? If you sleep, I, I, I got a bed. No, they look at us like, hey, you're a man. You eat and you, you, you get tired. I'll give you some food. I'll give you a place to, to sleep and to rest. How's that? Look at Judges 13.3. Judges 13 is, is a remarkable. You read the whole chapter yourself, but Judges 13, 3. This is the parents of Samson. Who God, if Samson would have done, you imagine what God has, would have done with Samson and Israel had Samson was not been carnal? Verse 3. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto the woman and said unto her, Behold, now thy, thou art barren. Okay. <laughs> She's barren. Elizabeth was barren. Well, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at angels, but look at the comparison of Samson. Verse 6. And the woman came and told her husband, saying, A winged creature of God came unto me. And his countenance was like the countenance of, of an angel of God with wings. And, and he floated off the thing, and I seen a vision of him in my toast. Not a drop in in down in Mexico, Nana. It's not what it says. You see why the Pope does not want these people to read the Bible? Because the Bible says that a woman came and told her husband. Now we just read in verse three, a man of God was like the countenance of an angel of God. The man and the angel looked like looking alike. Very terrible. That doesn't mean. You know, that means he he inspired. There's something about him that he inspired fear that you need to observe this guy. And they wanted to ask me his name. They wanted to know a name. 
Verse 8. And Manoah entreated the Lord and said, Oh my Lord, let the man of God. Got it? Verse 9. And God hearkened the voice of Manoah, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field, but Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made haste and ran and showed her husband and said unto him, Behold, the man has appeared unto me that came unto me the other day. Come see this winged creature. It's not what she says. Verse 11, Manoah rose and went to his wife and came after his wife and came to the man and said unto him now listen if he was a winged creature art thou the man that spake unto the moon I think the guy would see the wings if they were there but he walks up to this man he says are you the one there was nothing about this man that you're the one <laughs> no I have to ask you are you the one now look at Hebrews 13 2 Hebrews is a New Testament book to the Hebrews got it but there's something quite remarkable I'm way over here in Revelation I can't turn pages no more my hands are no. 13 2 as I try to turn these pages bear with me Alright, 12, 13, 2. Alright, we're there. I'm there. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, people you don't know. For thereby some have entertained angels unaware. You know, you could have had a man come in your life and you you done something for him and he could have been an angel. Now, do you believe in 2014 that I do believe that by that verse? And according to what the Bible says, I don't think it would be a woman. Now, you got to use discretion. Now, don't go out there and help every man that shows up to you and, and oh, you're a woman, so you can't be an angel. I'm not going to, don't you do that. <laughs> But if an angel appeared to them in the Old Testament and to Zacharias in, in, in what you not call the New Testament, Christ hasn't died, but in the writings of the Gospels, if it would show up to the, to be angels or men, if God were to, were to, you know what, I want to see how he would treat one of my, one of my angels. I want to see how he would act. He would send down a man that would come down to you would be a man. And you may entertain him. As Lot, as Abraham, as Manoah did, and to you would be this an ordinary man. And that angel, I don't know how often God does it. That angel will report back to God, and God will say, How'd you do? Hey, I got a good meal of that guy. Imagine the angel going back, God, that guy is faithful. What do you mean, faithful? Oh, I went up to him and said, you know, go have money. You know? And he asked me what I was going to do with the money. Well, I told him I was going to get a sandwich or something. But he was afraid I was going to use it for alcohol or cigarettes. And you know, he took me into a place and told me whatever I wanted, I can get. So I got me what they called me a a ham sandwich and this weird stuff called coca-cola and he told me to get a cookie he grabbed me a cookie and we went up to this thing and this guy rung it out and it cost what kind of thing and and he took this piece of plastic thing and Lord, look what he gave me. He gave me something that's all about Jesus Christ. See that? That's exactly what that's exactly what, what we saw your son do 33 AD. It's all about Calvary. And you know, he told me how to be saved. I can't be saved, Lord, but he told me how to be saved. 
Yeah. Never know. They look like men. They don't have wings. And the Bible records that even us Christians may be able to entertain some of them and not even know it. Now, back to Luke 1, 12. Now, if there is an unauthorized man in the holy place, there was trouble to come. Remember all the reason we told only the priest could go there. I kept telling you, mark that. If you go back and listen to the video, go back and listen to the, the audio. I kept telling you to mark it, to mark it, to mark it. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. He is inside the temple. He is inside the holy place. No one but other priests can be in there. And Zacharias knows this person is not a Levite. He is not a priest and he does not belong in here. That is why he feared. Now whether he just appeared and there he is. We don't know. There appeared on him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar. It doesn't say he walked in. It doesn't say he just, you know, Casper the Friendly Ghost kind of thing. He could have walked in when Zacharias was doing something and he would never say him. We don't know. I can't say he popped in. I can't say he walked in. We, we're not told. But there is fear. Zacharias is fearing for his life and the people that are outside praying. Someone unauthorized has entered into the holy place. And now there's trouble. Second Chronicles 26. Second Chronicles 26. Okay, we're not going to get far. Second Chronicles 26, 1. We're not going to read the whole chapter. Second Chronicles 26, verse 1. Then all the people of Judah, that's the southern tribe, they're the ones with Jerusalem took Uzziah, who was 16 years old, and made him king in the room of his father, Amaziah. We're looking at Uzziah. He's now king. Verse 16. And I can assume 95% that this is now what is in Zacharias' head. Maybe not. If he knew his scripture... And he did. He knew the law. He knows the story of the priest because he is a priest. Don't tell me this did not come up in, in, the, in the school. Verse 16. But when he was strong, this is Uzziah, one, verse 1. His heart was lifted up to his destruction. For he transgressed against the Lord his God and went into the temple of the Lord. To what? Burn incense upon the altar of incense. Guess where he's standing? He's either standing in one or two places. He's either standing where Zacharias is standing or he's standing where Gabriel's standing. Okay, right now it don't look bad. The king is in the holy place. The king. He's not a priest. All right, let's read on. And Azariah the priest went in after him. Hey, 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 hey! Where are you going, king? And with him, 
four score, 80 priests of the Lord that were valiant men. This is the king we're talking about. He calls with himself 81 priests. Because the king has gone into the holy place. And they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, It appraineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense unto the Lord. It's not your job. But to the priests, the sons of Aaron, Zacharias was allowed in there. Go out of this go out of the sanctuary, go, the holy place, for thou hast trespassed. Zacharias is standing at a man. You don't belong in here. And I wonder if he's thinking there should be 80 priests of us right now. Who on earth? This is the king. Zachariah, look at who are you? Who do you think you are? We're not done. For thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thy honor from the Lord God. Then Uzziah was wroth. Right? Now this is Zachariah. Is this guy going to get mad at me now? And had a censer in his hand. Zacharias had the censer. To burn incense. Zacharias is holding the incense. He is doing the incense job. He is holding it. And this story is probably going through his head. And while he was wroth with the priests. The leprosy even rose up in his forehead. Before the priest in the house of the Lord. From beside the incense altar. Zacharias is afraid of leprosy showing up. Either on this guy. On himself who's holding the incense. Or the people outside. Somebody is, is going to get a judgment upon God. Because somebody's in the wrong place. And don't you think that he's got uh, uh, Nahab and Abihu also who offered strange incense that they became a... That is why Zacharias is over there now shaking in his boots. He's got plenty of stories that whatever goes on in the holy place, if it's not authorized by God, somebody is going to get a judgment. Somebody's going to die. Somebody's going to get a play. And Azariah, the chief priest, and all the priests looked upon him, and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from thence. Zacharias is only one man right now. Azariah is called 80, what is it, 80 or 81 or 71. 81. He can't call the people outside to come and help him because they're not priests. And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death. And dwelt in a several house being a leper. For he was cut off from the house of Israel. I mean the house of the Lord, excuse me. He can never go back to the temple. Now, why do you think in Luke chapter 1, verse 12, why do you think that he is fearing? Why do you think he, he's shaking in his boots? The, maybe Uzziah had good intention. I don't know. Maybe he, and they said he was lifted up in pride, but maybe he wanted to do something for the Lord, but that was not his thing. That it was not his position as a king. He was not a priest. Verse 
the judgment of God for doing right, but not in a proper way. Uzzah went up and touched the ark, and he became a ashes. He had good intentions. The ark of God was going to shake, but he could not touch it. You may have good intentions, but if you do something that God tells you not to do, you are in trouble. Now, another case, 1 Samuel 13, 8. 1 Samuel 13, 8. There's another person that interceded into the priest's office that was not to be. 1 Samuel 13, 8. And he lost the kingdom. You know, Zachariah is saying, okay, here comes a plague of leprosy. Or how about this? I can't go into this temple no more and be for the Lord. Or how about this? And he, this is Saul, King Saul, tarried seven days, according to the set time that Samuel had appointed. But Samuel came not to Gilgal. The people were scattered from him. And Saul said, Bring hither a burnt offering to me, and peace offerings. And he, Saul, offered the burnt offerings. And it came to pass that as soon as he had made an end of offering, the burnt offering, he wasn't having a barbecue. Behold, Samuel came, and Saul went out to meet him, that he might salute him. And Samuel said, What hast thou done? And Saul said, Because I saw that the people were scattered from me, and that thou camest not within the days appointed, and that the Philistines gathered themselves together at Michmash. Therefore said I, The Philistines will come down now upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. I forced myself, therefore, to offer a burnt offering. And Samuel said to Saul, Thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever, but now thy kingdom shall not continue. That king Uzzah later, he does not become, continue to be king no more. He's a king, but he's in another house. And no one can see him because he's leprous. Saul loses his kingdom for inter interceding into an office that is not his. So back to Luke chapter 1, verse 12. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear upon him. He's inside the temple. There is somebody who does not belong there, so he thinks. He wouldn't be afraid of it if he knew it was an angel or a, a, a winged creature. This is no King Saul. This is no King Uzzah. It's an angel. It's a, look, look at his wing. That's not the case. He's fearing like King Saul and like King Uzzah. There's a man in the place that does not belong here. There will be no more rights to the temple. There will be no more kingdom. There will be some kind of plague of death or what have you. You know, Saul ended up with, with an evil spirit. Now don't you see why Zacharias is trembling? We're, I'm going to hate to do this, but we're going to leave this old man trembling in the temple looking at this creature. I mean, this person. And we'll let him do it for a whole week, Lord willing. Sit there trembling with his jaw on the ground, holding the incense altar. And I'll leave you with this thought. Picture Uzziah. There he is holding the incense altar. Imagine, imagine Zacharias. He's. Wish I had a mirror in here. I wonder what leprosy feels like. You know he had to know the story. He knew that uh, Abihu, uh, Nahab and Abihu offered strange what? 
Incense? <laughs> That's why he's shaking in his boots. As we conclude in Luke. Thank you.